Yo, I'm not gonna waste your time. Today I will present you my tier list for the melee DPS classes. Um, we're gonna start from C and work our way up to S. Uh, but remember, this is only my opinion. Um, a lot will most likely change. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, we are only in beta testing phase. Um, the classes are not done yet, and this is only my opinion. But let's start with the C tier. In the C tier, I want to put assassination. Okay, so wh why are my reasoning for this? A big reasoning for putting assassination on a C tier list, on a C list, sorry, is because of the easy reason that it feels like they lack both single target and the AOE capability. You, ha you don't really have that much single target. I mean, you have death mark that will uh, duplicate your um, rupture and garrote and target. The sad thing is that they have actually removed Vendetta uh, and instead put Deathmark as your new Vendetta. I don't like it as much. But the tuning around Assassination, in my opinion, feels very bad. Um, if you compare it to a Fear Warrior, uh, a Fear Warrior can pop their CDs uh, and do at least 150k burst. As a Asa Rogue, first of all, you don't have any CDs to pop. The literally only the only abilities you're gonna press on AOE is gonna be fan of knives into your spender to do an AOE damage, and it's non-comparison to uh, the classes as of right now. Um, as for the single target damage, for a long sustained damage fight, I I can understand that uh, it can be good, though. Um, it feels like they don't have the same capability um, of uh, doing the same damage. They have good output damage, though it's not even uh, compared same to um, like a Windwalker or something like that. You have your death mark, which you can apply to a target uh, every once, one and a half minutes or two minutes. I'm not uh, quite sure uh, what city it's on it. That will make you uh, damage. Uh, fly up a bit, after that you will uh, most likely lose it quite instantly. So that is my reasoning to putting uh, Asa Rogues on the C tier list as of right now. This tier list will be uh, evaluating uh, keys upwards of 15. So this is not uh, me playing a 10 and uh, rating these classes. And I have actually played every single class that I am rating. I'm not just uh, going for the, the easy mode and just seeing what other players are doing. I actually have played all of the classes. As for the utility side, you have extremely good utility. I mean, you have uh, kidney shot, cheap shot. Uh, you got the misdirect that is extremely good for tanks on high keys. Um, you also got uh, extremely uh, like you got extremely good slows with your uh, poisons. You got mediocre, I would say, survivability. I mean, you have your, um, I mean, you have one, you have faint, uh, you have vanish. I suppose is an FCD actually. You actually, yeah, that's, you actually have a, po a crimson poison uh, uh, too. Or I'm not sure if it's crimson poison or crimson weep, but that will increase, um, generate like five percent of your HP uh, over one second of time. So next up uh, on the C or on the B tier list, sorry, is gonna be the Survival Hunter. As I think most of you guys know, Survival Hunter was easily uh, one of the strongest DPS in both uh, Shadowlands Season 3 and Season 4. Uh, and that was because of the simple reason that they had uh, extremely good output damage, which are wild cluster bomb, that was a legendary. Um, and they, you had uh, the ability to reset your um, bombs extremely frequent, which are two set and four set, of course. Sadly, now um, we do not have two or the four set in our talent tree. They have also reworked survival a fuck ton. It's not looking remotely the same as it did before. You do not have the same capability of uh, resetting your bombs any longer, and they do not do any like even close to the damage they did before. They do a fraction of the damage they do. Though, you have, they have buffed your like Mongo's Bite, your Serpent Sting. Serpent Sting can be applied to two targets, 
uh, that is closer to your main prior target. Um, and that actually does fairly good damage. It's gonna be a, like a filler spell to press. Survival Hunter has, I would say, mediocre single target damage. I mean, in my opinion, um, Survival Hunter uh, is gonna shine more on single target damage than they will do on AoE. Though, ge don't get me wrong, uh, Survival Hunter does have quite uh, good uh, AoE damage too. When they pop like Coordinated Assault uh, and your Fury of Angel. I mean, you have, like all of the classes right here have decent of everything. Like, that's why you cannot really say that they are bad. But, I mean, they are underperforming a bit, in my opinion. I mean, survival is underperforming if you compare it to the classes that are in the top tier as of right now. I mean, for the utility side, hunters in general, I mean, they have BL. They bring a melee kick. Um, they also have, uh, like, root traps, snares. They also have uh, misdirect for the tanks. That is also... a uh, can be a, a, like a game breaker in high keys. They also bring... Honestly, that's kind of it in my opinion. For the survival ones. I mean, maybe there could be something else I'm not thinking about as of right now. The only thing I would have like, like seen Blizzard doing... Sorry, I'm just going to drink some water here real fast. Is actually... Either you implement the two or the four set in our talent tree. So we have the. We don't need to have the same capability as we had before with uh, resetting our bombs. But at least that we have a chance to reset bombs. The only reason you have, like the only time you can actually reset bombs now, uh, is either with your carve uh, or your butcher. Butcher is the same thing as carve. You can also reset bombs with your Fury of Angel. Left of Eagle, sorry. And Coordinated Assault does not work the same as it did before. Coordinated Assault now uh, will empower your bombs so they do more damage. When I say more, I mean a bit more damage. And they will also light up, so it's a, a better version of the Force set, kinda. Next up, I wanna put a Retribution Paladin. So my, what are my thoughts I get like for Retribution Paladin and why is it on a B tier list? Honestly, in my opinion, I mean, Ret Paladins are quite good. Don't get me wrong, they have good single targets and they have good AoE. They also have extremely good survivability with uh, utility for the group. The only big problem is that I have felt when I play... Uh, a paladin or a red paladin is that you have extremely good damage when you pop your divine toll, your uh, wings, etc. etc. When you have your big CDs, it's like this you pop your CDs, bam, CDs is over, down. That is my opinion. I, I feel like they don't have the, the same sustained damage without any CDs. If you compare a, a Fury Warrior to a red paladin right now. Fury Warrior has extremely good, um, like they have extremely good um, uh, damage over a longer period of time without losing too much. Um, I don't feel like Red Paladins have that as of right now. They also don't bring any DRV, um, and what I mean by DRV is uh, reducing um, um, cooldowns, reducing the seconds, uh, the, the time of your CDs. They don't have any major thing that can reduce, uh, reduce the, the CD of your wings, divine toll. Uh, they are stuck to the like ish one minute on divine toll and two minutes on your um, on your um, on your wings. But nonetheless, uh, red paladins bring a lot of utility. I mean, they have extremely good utility, such as uh, uh, blessing of protection, blessing of sacrifice, blessing of freedom. They have two bops, one for themselves and one for a party member. They also bring uh, an aura. They bring a lot of auras actually, but one aura in particular that will um, reduce your damage taken by 3%. Uh, 
can come in very handy sometimes. They can also cleanse the uh, toxinesses of a player. Can be extremely good also. Next up on the B list is gonna be Arms Warrior. In my opinion, Arms Warrior is uh, the better version of Warriors right now. Fury Warrior is, without a doubt, in my opinion, the strongest Warrior spec out there right now. For the easy reason that uh, they have extremely good uptime on uh, their CDs with uh, DRV. But let's talk about my thoughts on uh, Arms Warrior. My thoughts is easy. You have good single target damage and AoE damage when you have your CDs. It's the same thing as it was with the Red Palla. It feels like you go up, it's spiky damage, you go up and then you instantly, go, you don't go down, but you lose your momentum extremely fast. I mean, you have sweeping strike. Um, the problem is that I feel is that your sweeping strike, I think it's up for the duration of 7 to 8 seconds. I feel like if they increased the duration to say 10 seconds and have the same um, reducing CD as uh, you had you has as an outlaw rogue, arms ray would be extremely, not extremely, but they would be a lot higher up in the tier list rankings. Because as of right now, it feels like you pop your big CDs, you pop your you use your sweeping strike, you use your big CDs, your uh, thunders, roar, blade storm, etc., etc. After that, you don't have any AOE capability. You're stuck to pressing single target abilities on a target uh, that will not help you any. Like, sure, it will do damage, but it's gonna be it's not gonna be a major thing, so to say. As for the utility side, I mean warriors, <coughs> they bring uh, battle shout. But a rallying cry can be a good too. They have decent, um, decent uh, utility, I would say. I mean, yeah. I mean, they only bring kind of, and they have only storm bolt that is a single target stun. They have. I'm not sure if, they, as I said before, they only have battle shout and uh, battle um, rallying cry. As for the utility side, you can spec into double charge. You can also play with, um, or you you play with um, heroic leap. That can be very efficient sometimes. But I mean, I feel like they are a bit mediocre now. If they maybe just, uh, yeah, the easy thing, if they just extend the duration of your uh, sweeping strike, I think they will uh, will be a lot better than they are uh, now. Actually, in my opinion. Okay, as for the A tier list, I'm gonna put. Asar, eller, sub Subrogue first. I played Subrogue a bit actually. It's it's extremely fun. I mean, it's the same. Um, it's the same um, playstyle you had in uh, in Shadowlands, where you uh, either you spam your um, Shirk and Storm into um, your um, I'm not sure what it's called right now, but uh, your main AOE ability uh, to deal damage. The same thing goes for a single target. I mean, you use your spenders, such as your Shadow Strike, into funneling Eviscerate. They also have a pretty good uh, DRV, uh, reducing CD, uh, reducing uh, your timing on your CDs, so you can uh, efficiently have your CDs up quite often. They have actually um, very good single target and AOE, in my opinion. Um, I feel like they don't. I feel like the uh, sub rogue is actually in a pretty good state as of right now. I mean, they bring also a lot of utility. They are the rogue spec, in my opinion, that has the most utility. I mean, you can literally cheap shot stun every target three times. You also have blind, kidney shot. Um, I mean, what else can you ask for? And also, you have tricks of traits. But I have already said that with uh, the Asa rogues. Sub is also maybe not the like the the most fun spec. It is, um, in my opinion, that is. Maybe you enjoy uh, placing uh, Shirk and Storm into uh, um, your um, main ability damage. But I mean, I can 
I can see why you think it's funny. I mean, it has pre been performing extremely well here in um, in the beta testing as of right now. And I think they will uh, evolve the higher the keys goes. Um, next up, I want to talk about Enhancement Trauma. And I'm going to put them at S or A tier also. Just going to drink some water first. I know, this may come as a shocker. I mean, what? How can um, Enhancement be A tier when they were literally the god of everything? And I will try to explain as good as I possibly can. As of right now, uh, Enhancement Shaman has got on a 25% flat nerf on every every damaging spell you have. I mean, it's pretty huge in my opinion. I think they overdid it a lot, actually. In my opinion, I think 10 to 15% would have been enough um, to do like to be still relevant and still be a good class. Like, as of right now, I feel like Enhancement is... They are good, they are still extremely good, but they are non-comparison close to where, how they were before. I mean, they, they still do extremely good single target damage, and they still do fairly strong uh, AoE damage with your uh, Chain Lightning, your Fire Nova, etc, um, etc. Et I mean, you do extremely good damage still. But I think, I, I feel like it's non-comparison close. Um, to how it uh, to how it was before. I mean, the utility side. You can. I mean, you bring good utility. Honestly, you only bring BL. You you also bring some roots. You have an uncapped AOE stun that can come in handy sometimes. You also bring some off heals, I suppose. I mean, as for the survivability, I mean, you have one wall. That's kind of it. I mean, you can spec into your Ghost Wolf talent that will um, reduce damage taken while in Ghost form for like 25% or so. Can be good, but I mean, then you need to sit in, uh, in Ghost Wolf for that to be active. But nonetheless, I do still think that uh, Enhancement Shaman is going to be extremely viable in uh, end tier content. And I think everyone saying it's an en high dead, then I said, I don't, I, I don't think they are dead. I think they will scale up the higher the keys get and the more gear you get. As for every class on this tier list, honestly. Next tier on the A tier list is gonna be the I'm gonna put Fear Old Druid. This may as also came come as a shocker. But I I feel like as a Fear Old Druid you have extremely strong um, AOE damage capabilities now that your um, your rip and rake just is just a multiplier with your uh, with your wounds, so you can instant like instantly get it up on every target. It has never been such as before. This is the first time they have uh, uh, implemented this, and I I do like the change. I think it's extremely fun, and it gives the a fear a chance to compete um, with the higher classes. Because it was a long long time ago, the, the Fear of Druid spec was actually meta, eller meta class to play. As for the AoE, they have extremely good AoE. It, I, I would say that Fear of Druid has more AoE damage than they have single target damage. Though, don't get me wrong, I mean, the single target damage is extremely good. But I feel like we're, mm, we're uh, uh, like a Fear of Druid shines. Is on the AOE big packs on a high key fortified with the ads don't die extremely fast with the up and your rip rake and your wound is up on every target. That is where you gonna shine. I don't think a feral druid is gonna shine on a single target boss for a longer period of time. The utility side, I mean, you bring extremely good utility such as off fields. You have roots, snares, you also have a range kick that can come in handy sometimes. The survivability, I mean, just go into beer form and bar screen and you're like a literal raid boss. You cannot die. It's extremely hard to kill a to kill a, <laughs> a druid in, in beer form. But nonetheless, I do think Feral is extremely strong uh, still at the moment. Um, I think... Uh, they will be meta also, 
Um, next up is gonna be the Frost DK. As I have stated before, Frost DKs have a bit of a situation, in my opinion. Um, like, I, as I said before, I'm evaluating this tier list out of plus 15 keys, where a Frost DK would actually shine a bit more than um, they would on, say, a plus 10 or something, where the ads die literally in 10 seconds. I also think that a Frost DK is gonna shine more on AoE target pulse, where it's multiple targets. As I said before, with the feral ones with like a high, 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 high key with fortified and a bunch of heads, then you're gonna have your like the ability to have your Dread, um, Breath of Cinder goes up for extremely long period of time, every most uh, freezing wind, uh, every most winter, and that would just obliterate everything. You will do so, so, so much damage. As for the single target side, I think they lack a bit of uh, single target. Still have good single target though, but I feel like they lack a bit of um, the consistent single target. I mean, you have extremely good single target when you pop uh, like your um, Breath of Syndergosa in combination with your uh, your CDs. But I think it's the spike effect. I think you will go up and you will kind of be flat and you will spiral down a bit, I would say. As for the mobility, I mean, you have Death Advanced. You can spec into two charges of Death Advanced. Pretty good. Uh, you also have Lichborn, um, and uh, yeah, I mean you have Lichborn and uh, Icebound Fortitude that can uh, like um, immune you to fear charm effects and knockbacks effects when you use your Death Advance that can come in very handy. As for the utility, I mean they bring extremely good slows with Chain of Ice. They have AMC. Um, and they also have uh, an AoE blind. I just want to touch on one thing also. They actually have uh, Magic Shell also that uh, can come in extremely handy if you uh, play. I'm going to give you an example. You play Algot Academy, first boss, or first ads on the dungeon. There is uh, the ads does an uh, like AoE ground effect. If you stand in it, you take extreme amount of damage. As a Frost DK, you can pop your... Uh, your shell and you will most likely be fine on a lower end of keys. Maybe not in a high, but I don't think you will die though. Next up on A tier list, I'm gonna actually put Unholy. This also may come as a shocker, as uh, I think people know and I have seen that Unholy is performing extremely well in um, keys as of right now. Um, with the bur bursting source spec. The problem is, I think it's capped. I think you're gonna be limit capped to damage you're gonna be able to put out. So you're gonna do your uh, big damage. I also think you're gonna fall off. Not fall off in particular, but drop damage extremely fast. In my opinion, it feels like an Unholy DK lack maybe a bit of single target too. Don't get me wrong though, they have good single target damage, but I feel like they can maybe rework the, the spec out a bit in my opinion and maybe not only just focus on uh, the AoE uh, perspective of it and also maybe put in some single target uh, spells that will uh, do so your more stable damage. I mean as goes for every class on this tier list. I mean, when you pop your CDs, of course you're going to do big damage, but the difference comes down to are you able to m maintain the same damage or are you going to like drop off extremely fast? As for uh, Unholy DK, I, I think they are a class that will pop their CDs and they will also drop off extremely fast and lose the momentum they have. As for the utility and survivability, they have the exact same as, uh, as a Frost DK. Fairly good in my opinion. Now for the, the S tier class, uh, I'm gonna put Fury Warrior. Oh, shocker bro, why do you put Fury Warrior? They suck. They do not suck. Fury Warrior is insane in my opinion. You have the most DRV, 
DRV is uh, uh, reducing your um, CDs faster. You can literally have your um, CDs up almost every every pull. Like your Odin's Fury does insane damn. Same with your Ravenger. Uh, your Recklessness and Avatar is low CD. You have extremely strong single target damage. Uh, same goes for AoE. Like you are the class that can maintain a good number through the whole fight in my opinion. Um, as for the utility side, same goes uh, for the arms warrior there. I mean you don't have that much utility. I mean you have Battle Shout, Spell Reflect, Rallying Cry, um, and Single Target Stun. That is honestly it on uh, and same goes for the mo mobility side. I mean you have the same mobility as a as an arms warrior. Um, I just wanna touch real quick on uh, uh, like a bit of the single target aspect uh, as well as the AOE aspect. As a all like as a fury warrior you have a phenomenally good AOE damage when you pop your CDs. The ability you have uh, makes it so your Odin's Fury and all your CDs are extremely good and most of your spells is a DRV spell that will reduce the CD of your major CDs like Avatar, Odin's Fury so you get them back faster. Next up on the S tier list is gonna be um, Havok DH. Havok DH is also performing extremely good. Um, they have extremely good single target damage. Same goes for AoE. Um, I mean, it's not too much to say about DH spec in general. I mean, in my, my opinion, d like, DH has always been a good and consistent class throughout Mythic Plus. Um, they also bring uh, a 5% magical increased damage. Um, to your party member. Sadly, it's looking like it's going to be a, a melee meta, so I don't think that uh, it will come in too handy though, but I mean it's still a, still a good thing. As for the utility side, I mean you bring um, decent utility, I mean you have AoE stuns, you have also have single target stuns, you have great passive and uh, passive reduction uh, damage taken, as well as uh, passive uh, healing, um, self-healing with your uh, leech. The mobility side is, I mean, it's a DH, it's extremely good. I mean, you can literally glide um, and dash all over the place. Though, now you play momentum, so you need to be a little bit careful to when you use your uh, mobility because momentum is gonna be a big role in your damage to, uh, like your uh, ability to uh, maintain damage on a high higher end. Next up on the S tier list is going to be the Outlaw Rogue. Same goes for the Outlaw Rogue. In my opinion, Outlaw Rogue has always been a class that performs extremely good. Maybe a bit less in uh, season four in uh, Dragon uh, in uh, Shadowlands, but it's still an extremely strong spec. I mean, as I said before, like. Outlaw is the perfect example of a class that has built in um, CD reducer uh, on every ability you press almost yeah, with your uh, bone or with your uh, rolls. Like you can literally reset your ad uh, adrenaline rush by pressing your main ability spells. Um, same goes for literally every spell you have almost. Like the DRV you have, like you can have your um, Blade Fury up for 100% of the dungeon. Blade Fury is target cap to 8, but, a big but, can be um, extended to 8 if you talent are into it. The utility one uh, for an Outlaw Rogue is also extremely strong. As I mentioned before with the DRV, the same goes for all your uh, your um, single, uh, not your single, your AOL like stuns. So for kidney shot, uh, your um, sheep shot, blind, everything is on a DRV, so you get it back extremely fast with your bones, or with your um, 
your roles. Just want to clarify what I mean by DRV is example here. I press my main abilities. I use five uh, combo points. Say I have one minute left on my adrenaline rush. When I use those five combo points into ability and, and ability damage spell, they will be uh, like the main CD of my adrenaline rush will be reduced. Same goes for my uh, blade fury and almost every ability you have. Last class I want to touch on is um, of course Windwalker Monk. They have been nerfed. I do still think that they are extremely strong both in single target and the AoE capability. I think a Windwalker is uh, same in my opinion. I mean they have the same ability to do single target and do we have uh, damage. I mean it's a bit less now because they have actually nerfed it a lot. And a big reasoning for me to, uh, to putting Windwalker Monk on a S tier is your ability to have sustained damage. Sustained damage is literally everything you need on a higher key. Like, a arms warrior pops everything, bam, you're gonna drop down extremely fast. A Windwalker can pop their CDs, still roll out and have a like healthy flow of damage all the time. As for the utility side, I mean you have extremely good utility with Wall, Karma, Ring of Peace, Diffuse Magic. Mobility side, I mean you have Rolls of Infinite. Um, you have speed increase. A big thing is also, if it's looking like we're going into a melee heavy meta, Windwalker is going to be extremely well fitted there because they bring a 5% increased physical damage taken. So every class on S tier list, if you, if you say uh, a group is uh, a Windwalker, an Outlaw and a Fury Warrior, the Fury Warrior and the Outlaw Rogue will have do 5% increased damage uh, over the whole dungeon because the Windwalker is in the group. That is extremely strong. That was everything for me. I'm not going to talk too much. It's already been half an hour. Uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. Peace the fuck out.